Hello guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to start a project for one of those new ships that are out there in AliExpress and other stores. This one right here is the Buffalo Labs DL 616 or 616. This one right here, this is sold by Sidepit. Also Sidepit sells the module, like the, the smaller module that, that is here. So I went ahead and created my own modules like this one right here. This one connects directly to the USB port. So. It is smaller in footprint, as you can see. I also create this one. It's very similar in, in footprint. However, I added the USB-A because for most of the computers, it's simpler just to plug this into the USB port and that's it. And yeah, how to decide compares against a ESP32? Well, as you can see here, I have a ESP32 S3 version, as you can see there. And the size, well, is uh, it's obvious, right? The size is or feels bigger, ESP32. Let me show you right there. Feels bigger. However, this one right here has a lot of uh, GPIOs that you can do a lot of things. If you don't need a lot of GPIOs, the BL616 uh, has a lot of potential and a lot of resources. Mm, some of those resources are a little hidden, but uh, we are going to cover. Uh, basic project. So, uh, what we are going to do in this project is we are going to compare the power consumption um, from the Buffalo Lab 616 and the ESP32 running the same program. That's very important. Uh, I created the same program or I replicated the same program in, in both platforms so that you can experience in this video how uh, development compares uh, between each one of them. Um, I have to say that a lot of the resources, the technical resources for the Buffalo Lab 616 um, is not fully completed, right? However, most of the implementations are inherited from other platforms. For instance, the, um, the Bluetooth implementation, I took a lot of documentation out of Zephyr, uh, uh, the Zephyr's implementation. So you can use Zephyr implementation. So that's, that's a hint for you if you want to start with um, with Bluetooth, for instance, which uh, it was my case. Uh, I discovered that m most of the classes and names and informations and implementations come from Zephyr. All right, let's move on to the computer. Uh, in a little bit, we are going to also check the, the power consumption. So while we get there, let's go to the computer and let's analyze the, the workflow, how you download everything, where do you download everything, how you compile. And most importantly, how do you compile for the Mac OS system? All right. Okay. Let's, let's move on to the computer. You're on the computer, on the GitHub repository. So the first thing that you want to do is to clone this uh, repository, the one that I have here. This is the Mac OS toolchain that I compile for obviously building applications for the Buffalo Lab 616. So you're going to clone this one in your computer and you're going to place it on the OPT RISC toolchain, as you can see here, I have it on the OPT RISC toolchain. All right. And then you're going to go ahead and uh, clone the Buffalo Lab SDK as well. Uh, you can find it on the Buffalo Lab main account. And it's about one gigabyte of space. So make sure that you have enough space for both repositories. Once you download it, both repositories, you are going to continue with the instructions that I pasted here. And these instructions allow you to build the system because it doesn't contain properly the configurations for building for the Mac OS system. So as you can see, I changed this file, the project build file, and I added here this uh, Mac OS, all right, black. I also updated the bot read speed on the same file, project build. And because it doesn't have like a standard speed, I know that some chips can support the original speed that it had here. But in my case, I wasn't able to get good readings with the original one. So I changed this one here. Also, you're going to want to change the bot rate on the beards, uh, sorry, on the board C file, which is located on the BSP board. In my case, BL616DK. And it had previous speed. I moved it to a more standard one. All right. And finally, after you did those changes, just make sure that you patch also the BL, BFLB flash. Let me show you slash CMake, you need to patch this one here as well. You have to make sure that everything is in order, as you can see, All right? And you need to expose at the end, this path, the path of the, of the tuition that is on your computer. So in my case, I decided it was 
going to be on these paths, OBT, RISP, tool chain, uh, SHWANT, I don't know, uh, slash B, all right? So once you perform all those steps, you are free to continue your development. So in my case, I went ahead and created another project on the RT examples, peripherals, USB, and then I created uh, another one that is called USB keyboard. So let me show you what my project does. This is my project. Basically, in all the projects from Buffalo Labs uh, chips, or at least this one, Buffalo Lab uh, 616 or DBL 616, you're going to start uh, initializing the board. This method initializes the board. And what it means is it initializes the GPIOs, the peripherals, and makes sure that all the initial configurations are set properly. All right. And the BL616 uses a lot of the pre RTOs operating system. So you're going to see a lot of things that are inherited or used in other microcontrollers from FreeRTO. So in this case, I am initializing a UART serial port uh, for debugging purposes. And this is how you perform those uh, initializations. And then I enable the configuration for Bluetooth and I turn on the radio frequency radio. Sorry, the radio, the radio, the physical radio ship that is inside. Uh, that's something that, that I believe I am doing here because I saw in, in other examples. Uh, I'm not really sure, exactly, but I think this is what I do. And I enable the controller here and register a callback because in my project, I created an application that allows me to send keystrokes uh, from my phone into the computer. All right. So this is how you change the name of the Bluetooth radio and finally um, receiving the keystrokes from Bluetooth and injecting those into the USB port. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how I do that. And basically that's it. This project in particular, the one that I'm showing you right now, allows me then to uh, use an application from my phone or in my phone and uh, plug in my USB dongle uh, that I did with an ESP32 and DL616 and send some keystrokes. This is very interesting because for the, uh, let's say for, for the Raspberry, obviously you need a mouse and a keyboard. So this is what I, I did. This is how the application looks like. Whenever I start the application, it's going to blink in, in green. Uh, and that is going to be, uh, an indication that the application connected successful and is going to register, uh, all the keystrokes that I perform. I press the key here is going to, well, in the real device is going to show me the keyboard. And right here on the red, on the right uh, side, I have like a, a mouse. All right. So I can also inject my mouse position to the computer using uh, chips. All right. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, on this application here. All right. This application. No, please. This application is going to scan all the available Bluetooth devices that are nearby. All right. So first I'm going to show you how an ESP32 looks like. So I'm going to connect a ESP32. I'm going to scan for you to see. I'm going to connect a ESP32 and there, there you go. So this is an ESP32 that is exposing advertisement data through uh, the Bluetooth. All right. So I'm going to connect to it. These are the services that it has. All right. As you can see, these are the services. Okay. So no manufacturer data here. Very for all ID. Okay. Let's disconnect this one. And then I'm going to disconnect the ESP32. Also, I'm going to show you that uh, here I have the ESP32 connected to the USB manufacturer express systems. And yeah, basically. This is what I wanted to show you, All right? Press it, system. Let me from the USB and let's scan again the USB. It doesn't have any, any more the ESP32. Now let's connect the, um, Buffalo lab BL616. Thank you. Some moment. Oh, there you go. So it's connected. And as you can see, this is the Buffalo Lab chip, okay, being registered as a keyboard. Now let's scan it. There you go. 
connect to it. We have more services, as you can see. All right. So this is how both of them registered themselves. And now let me show you uh, how they look like, uh, like with the physical interaction, both of them. Okay. So let's move on from the computer to the uh, actual camera. All right. We are once again here on the outside world. So this is what I wanted to show you. This is the BL616, the profile lab chip. In the computer, I'm going to show you this section because this one is the, the important one. Let me just move it a little bit. I'm sorry for the reflection. But you should be able to see here. Okay. That's it. Now let's uh, go again here. Chipset. Here we have the ESP32. Here we have the Buffalo Lab. Okay. And now let's compare the current consumption. Okay. Wanna disconnect this one? And this is a um, PC board that I showed you earlier that I uh, made myself. And it feels uh, warm to the contact. Okay. So let's insert first the ESP32. ESP32, remember, is running the same application or basically it does the same thing. And it doesn't have anything else. It has a voltage regulator only. So let's connect this one. And as you can see, this is how the ESP32 performs. It is telling me that it uh, consuming, um, I don't know, maybe 20 milliamps or something. It looks like uh, the voltage is uh, five, I'm sorry, four dot, uh, 80, so it has a drop a voltage of 200 milli volts. All right. And okay, let's disconnect the ESP32. Okay, now let's connect the Buffalo Lab. All right. And as you can see, it has less um, drop voltage, only 100 milli volts. It's telling me maybe 10 milliamps, 20 milliamps or something in this part. Okay. So both of them are exposing a Bluetooth, um, let's say endpoint. Both are trying to register themselves as a keyboard, the USB keyboard to the computer. And it seems that the ESP32 is trying to consume a little bit more voltage and also a little bit more current okay all right so that's it for that part and i would like to show you how the application actually looks like and let me just go to a little cut and let's let's go back in okay we are now here again testing the buffalo lab chip i opened the system information window and as you can see this descriptor right here is telling us that the USB that was connected, it's a 2.1 device. On my right, I have my phone. This is my actual phone. And replicating the screen so that you can see it. So let's open up the application. This application blinks in green to connect with the device itself. So on my left, I have a screen. Let me. Hello. World. Intro. Okay, let's say one. And intro again. I have noticed that the Buffalo Lab has some lag sometimes. There you go, it's connected. It has some lag sometimes. And it's not as fast, let's say, in transmission as the ESP. Now, let me change the USB dongle device that I have. And now I'm going to use the ESP device. All right. So I already close this. And now let's move on here. Let's go ahead and get the system information from the last device that was connected. And as you can see, we have a device that is the ESP32 S3 manufacturer, expressive systems. Okay. And this device is doing exactly the same thing. So let's open up again the application. 
keyword. And this one is a lot faster. For instance, I'm going to type as fast as I can. Hello world. Okay. How are you? So I'm transmitting from my right, which is my phone, using Bluetooth into the uh, computer using a USB connection. And it's acting as a, a keyboard. Okay. So I additionally created this on your right screen. You can see that there is this big black circle. So that's a, that's a little mouse that I built as well. So let me show you. So I'm moving the mouse. Okay. It's, um, I know it's slow, but uh, it's useful for things like you don't want to carry a full size keyboard. All right. Or you don't want to carry the keyboard and the mouse set up at the same time. Even though there are some mouses and there are some keyboards that are small, they are very uncomfortable to work with. And if you are comfortable working with the keyboard of your phone, it's perfectly valid that you, that you can use it. Let me show you. This is a message from my phone. That's it. The ESP32 is in fact faster transmitting information, as you can see, but it's, it's consuming a little bit more voltage and a little bit more current. All right. So let's test again the Buffalo Lab chip. I'm going to close the application. I'm going to change the tool device and I'm going to plug in the Buffalo Lab. There you go. So I am now using the Buffalo Lab chip and it looks like it's connected. Okay. I just connected the device, the Buffalo Lab device, BL616, and as you can see, Sometimes I have noticed that the Bluetooth connection is quite uh, weak. All right. So even though it is connected, it is not transmitting all the time. And the speed of transmission, sometimes it's uh, slow. So basically you can work with it, but I would prefer to avoid all these type of issues. And I think this is it guys for the video. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.